Good evening, this is Quintus Curtius. Welcome back to the podcast. And in this podcast, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the idea that it's okay to have problems. It's okay to be, quote, on the edge. It's okay to have issues. And what made me think about this subject, what made me want to talk about the subject in a podcast is a movie that I saw just yesterday. Really, really good movie. And you're going to laugh when you hear this, but just bear me out as I explain myself. It's The movie is called Metallica, Some Kind of Monster. Okay, It's a documentary film that was filmed over a two-year period, I think from 2001 to 2003. The movie came out in 2004, but it's a documentary about the band Metallica and how they work through their, their inner demons their relationships with each other, their struggles with themselves, with their own addictions, their own personality issues, and their efforts to try to keep this band together. Now let me say, I am not a Metallica fan. I don't know anything about their music. I really know very little about their music. And I've heard a few songs here and there, just the type of thing that you pick up from growing up in the 80s and 90s. But I'm not a fan of Metallica. I don't uh, know anything about their music. I mean, it's okay to me. It's it's fine. You know, I like hard rock, you know, thrash metal, fine. That, that's It's all good. Everything has its place. But the only thing I really knew about Metallica before seeing this movie was that they were basically the, probably the number one concert draw in America for many years. You know, probably the granddaddy of all the heavy metal groups. The godfathers of the of the heavy metal thrash metal groups, you know these guys have made millions on top of millions on top of millions, and that's fine. you know they're good at what they do, they're great at what they do. that's fine. But you may wonder, okay, why would you want to see a movie like this when you you're not really into the subject matter? Well, this is the reason. Number one, I like movies as readers know, I like to review movies, I like to talk about them, I like to discuss film. I find it somehow very interesting. But I also like to see movies that are outside my interest area. I like to see movies about things that I don't know very much about because that's how you expand your knowledge. That's how you really grow as a person. You see different things. You begin to appreciate different parts of the world. And even though these guys are really not part of my world and I don't really know very much about them, I thought there might be something that I could learn from watching this documentary, which got so much good reviews. So I said, okay, let let me give this a, a chance. And it was a great movie. Let me tell you, it was a fantastic movie. It was really good. And let me explain to you why I think that. Well, first off, you know that a movie is great when it has the ability to pull you out of its immediate subject matter venue and make points that have universal applicability. And it was a lot like that when I saw the movie Pumping Iron. And I'm sure many of you guys have seen this movie. It came out, I think, in the early 80s or maybe the late 70s. I am not. I don't really remember, but it's, it's a famous movie, Pumping Iron with Arnold Schwarzenegger and some other bodybuilders. I think Lou Ferrigno's in it. I think uh, uh, some other uh, Sergio Oliva might be in it. I don't remember exactly. But anyway, this is a great pumping iron is a great movie because it elevates the subject matter out of the immediate venue of of bodybuilding to make universally applicable points first time viewers who may have gone to this movie expecting to see a routine flick about weightlifting were probably surprised at seeing a very poignant a very sensitive a very probing analysis of the psychology of competitors, each operating at their peak performance, each one skirting that fine boundary between success and obsession. And this is really what made Pumping Iron such a great movie because it had universal applicability. And I would tell anyone to go see this movie, you know, women, Uh, I would tell people that have no interest in bodybuilding, go see it, because it's not really so much about bodybuilding as it is about the human drama 
of struggle, of adaptation, and of conflict. And so it doesn't really matter whether we're seeing a movie about basket weaving or about weightlifting or about beekeeping or whatever. Uh, it's th- dealing with themes that have universal applicability. And that's really what I liked about this movie, Some Kind of Monster, Metallica, Some Kind of Monster. You don't have to be a musician to understand the kind of tension and drama that comes with having a business partnership with several other people. In fact, I think this movie is perfect, I think, for anyone who's in any sort of protracted relationship, whether it's a marriage relationship, whether it's a business relationship, or any kind of relationship, which basically means all of us, because everyone has connections with other people in one way or another. But what's good about it is that it shows the struggle that every man has with dealing with his peers, trying to overcome his own personal demons, and trying to simply keep something together, simply trying to keep a band together, to try to keep a business together, to try to keep maybe a relationship or a family together. And let me paint a little bit of the backstory here to the film, to Metallica's career, and how they came to make this documentary. Metallica had been formed in the early 1980s with these young guys, and there were always three hardcore, three core members, James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich, and Kirk Hammett. And the bass players had sort of come and gone I guess all bass, it seems like all bass players come and go. It seems to be like one of those universal platitudes of of the music industry. But in any case, by the end of the 1990s, it was clear that they had maybe run into some sort of plateau. They had kind of, um, they they, they had reached a wall. And they're very honest about this. You know, James Hetfield, the lead singer, uh, talks about he had alcohol addiction problems. It seems like he and Lars Ulrich had uh, some severe personality conflicts that they needed to work through. And Kirk Hammett was just sort of the all-around good guy, the sort of the clutch p- player who was just kind of keeping his head down, grinding it out, doing doing his job on a day-to-day basis. The real tension, the real conflict in the group is really between um, Lars Ulrich and uh, James Hetfield. They had a, a previous bass player, his last name is Newstead. I think James Newstead. I forget exactly what his first name was, but a previous bass player who had left due to the fact that he just couldn't deal with, apparently, James Hetfield's rigid control freak personality. And so what the band does is, it's, it's something I think just really extraordinary. Do you think of the guts that it would take to do this? They hire a, a, a psychologist to, to to join them in a, in a studio in the Presidio in San Francisco where they're recording this this new album, this album called Saint Anger. And they hire a mental health professional to sit with them and to talk with them, to follow them around and to help them work through their problems, work through their band problems, their personality problems, their addiction problems. It's an incredible spectacle. I, I don't think I've ever seen any artists with the type of self-confidence that it, that it would take to, to do this, to put themselves out on display like this, for all the world to see, to, to, to parade their problems out there and all of their goriness and all of their ghastliness. And I thought to myself, wow, you have my attention now. You have my respect because you were willing to be honest. You were willing to wrestle with the real demons you were willing to struggle with the real problems and i'll never criticize anyone who genuinely and honestly tries to solve problems tries to improve himself or herself i'll never criticize anyone who does that those i will criticize those who i will express contempt for are those who don't try who don't make an effort who want to whine and complain but anyway, the movie is just remarkable. It has 
scenes that are just fraught with tension. You can just feel the tension in the room. And there's one in- in- incredible scene where they even bring in a previously fired band member. And if you know the hard rock, heavy metal world, you'll recognize the, the name of Dave Mustaine, who I guess formed the band Megadeth after he was fired from Metallica in the early 80s. And it's very poignant. He, 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 he was fired basically because he also had alcohol and drug problems. He was also out of control. But it's a real moment of confession. It's a real moment of, of self-realization when he just bears his soul to the other members of the group. And I just thought to myself, wow, this is an, an incredible movie. This is a very, very worthwhile movie. And I say this because it taught me a couple things, or it reminded me of a couple things. And the first thing is that it's it's all right to have problems. It's all right to have issues. Because if a band is wealthy and as powerful and as big as Metallica has to work through their problems, I mean, these are guys who are you know, multi, multi-millionaires many times over, world famous. And yet, you see, these guys are human too. They eat their subway sandwich and they drink their coke or whatever just like all the rest of us they're human beings you know james hetfield shows uh, is is shown taking his daughter to a music recital or to a ballet class and it really kind of humanizes these celebrities in ways that you don't often see because i don't think your average conventional celebrity is really going to be willing to put himself through something like this so it's a very re- remarkable performance. And the second reason, besides the first reason, which is the idea that it's okay to have problems, I think the second thing that it reminds us about is that you've got to make an effort to work through your problems. Anyone that has a business relationship, a business partnership, a extended relationship of any kind with someone else, you got to put in the work. You've got to want to solve the problem. And I give these guys a lot of credit. They didn't just get up and walk away from each other. There are moments in the movie where you can feel like it's edging close to that, where Hetfield and Ulrich are literally at daggers drawn. But to their credit, they never quite cross the line. They always remain grounded. They always really understand where their bread is buttered. They know that they've got to work out these issues if they want to maintain themselves uh, professionally. And this ability, this ability to put cold, uh, cold-headed practicality ahead of emotion or transitory feel-goodism is really what separates a professional from an unprofessional, a non-professional. So this is a great movie, and I recommend that everyone should see it if they have a chance. And in in some ways it reminded me of, um, not directly reminded me, but in in some ways it reminded me of another great music-related film, which many of you probably have not seen, which you should see. And this was the 1970 film Gimme Shelter. And this was a documentary featuring the Rolling Stones. And it's also a very, very... uh, a very, very sobering look at the dark underbelly of the music world and just really what happens when you court those demons just a little bit too successfully. The movie is a documentary about uh, the Rolling Stones' 1969 tour. And this tour culminates in a free concert they gave at the uh, Altamont Speedway. And this was, I think, their their, uh, plan to sort of be a West Coast Coast answer to the Woodstock Festival, which had happened in in, uh, New York State. And it just really turned turned into a disaster. You know, I guess they hired the Hells Angels as security, and they had a lot of drugged out hippies that showed up to this thing, and just chaos erupted, and one guy was stabbed, and it's just, a, but the, the movie's very, very good. So if you get a chance to see it, I don't know if it's 
easily available. I haven't checked and see if it's on Netflix, but if you get a chance, try to check that out if you can. But um, Metallica, Some Kind of Monster is a very, very good movie, highly recommended. And it lets all of us know that it's it's okay to have problems. It's It's all right to have to work through your problems because that's really what separates the men from the boys. It's so easy to get up and just walk away from things. But if something is valuable, if something means something, you've got to put in the effort. And sometimes you have to swallow your pride. And sometimes you have to be in the wrong. And you have to admit you're in the wrong. And sometimes even when you're not in the wrong, you have to say that you are. Just for the greater good of the group. For the greater good of the enterprise. For the greater good of the extended unit for the group and that's really what I respected a lot about the guys in this group and again it's got nothing to do with music it has nothing to do with music this could have been about a uh, a, a jazz ensemble it could have been about uh, a collection of uh, of conga players from from wherever it doesn't the music doesn't really matter what matters is the interpersonal dynamics among the members of the group and this this psychologist is a is a you know pretty good at what he did he's pretty good at at uh, his job i mean he was expensive and they're perfectly honest about that but at the end of the day he did what he was hired to do he accomplished his goal and i think there's something to be said for that so Never feel afraid to express the fact that you have problems. You know, if you're approaching a problem with an honest heart and with sincerity and with an open and honest desire to solve the problem, no one's ever going to fault you for that. And that's really, I think, what the ultimate lesson is here with Metallica's Some Kind of Monster. So see the film if you get a chance. And that will wrap things up here for this podcast. I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.